Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new SBC today that's interesting in its own ways because they basically upgraded a silver version of a card to a gold version of a card, but he's at a 74 rating for the silver version of his card. It's kind of like a cool concept. Listen, you know, when I look at the, the gameplay guys, the gameplay game modes and the menu content guys i think the menu content guys have done a fantastic job with this game but i don't relate that directly to the other two right so specifically talking to those guys in regards to the spc content and what you guys have done with it you guys have done a great job these game modes suck and the gameplay suck but you guys have done a really good job with the summer heat pro because these different concepts are really cool to work with under the right circumstances unfortunately we're not yet there under the right circumstances but still regardless really cool uh type of content to release so in regards to the review guys i am curious to see what he's going to play like in game so we are taking a look at a card that is five foot ten with high medium work rates has the bare minimum of the four star four star capabilities right in regards to traits he doesn't have any traits so that's always a downfall of the card of course uh him being a right-footed player my mind is already kind of made up in regards to using him in the left attacking position just because i need him to do those cut inside runs if he specifically does that in game then he'll be really fun to use because this team specifically has uh diaby in it as well so if we can do something over that uh do something with that where that can work out it could be really nice because this card is way better than the uh the version that was there before the upgrade right so with this card uh, in regards to in games, he has 97 acceleration, 94 sprint speed. You don't necessarily need to improve that if you want to use him in the cam position or the right or left attacking mid. 510 height is pretty decent, but we do have to take a look at some of his dribbling stats as well. So, uh, with the shooting being as it is, with 88 attacking positioning, uh, 81 finishing, 90 uh, 90 shot power, so on and so forth, you do want to increase the shooting aspect of the card as much as possible because you want him to be as consistent as possible. Because it's good that his base card stats for shot power are at the very least at 90 it would obviously be better higher up because like i said i feel like a card plays more similar to their base card stats than they do with the with the upgrade but regardless the dead eye chemistry style will be significantly boosting the shooting as much as possible so we will be testing now from the linear shots like the, you guys know how shooting is in the game you know if you don't take the linear shots and it's not really gonna be consistent it's gonna be rng right unless you use the green time shots which you know uh in regards to passing abilities he does actually have some good passing abilities as well the dead eye chemistry style will also help out with that uh i know this is a little bit weird because i usually use a card like a marksman or something on this card which i still could potentially use i could still totally do that i just want to see if his dribbling is going to be enough without me having to give him the marksman chemistry style you know but in regards to passing we are boosting it ourselves as well as having good base passing stats too uh dribbling wise he does have 98 agility, 99 balance, with 93 ball control, 95 dribbling. You give a card like this back in the day, and like if you have a 13 and stuff, this card will be nuts, right? Nowadays, it's a little bit different. I may still have to increase that dribbling. If we take a look at his in-games with the chemistry styles, you can see that most people are giving him Deadeye, a sniper, a marksman, because obviously, as you guys know, people aim for responsive gameplay just as I do, right? So uh, with this card... You know, I'm also thinking a marksman could be good because uh, boosting these three dribbling stats right here could be ideal to do. The the physical, I don't really care too much, but it's a matter of boosting the dribbling with the finishing. Because if you were to give him a sniper chemistry style, yes, you're boosting the finishing as much as possible. Yes, you're giving him composed, composure, dribbling stats, all that stuff. I just feel like the dead eye is drastically improving the shooting aspect of the card. Now, he may not necessarily need it, which we will try out in game, which is why I gave him the Dead Eye Chemistry style first, because I want to see if I want more responsive gameplay, right? And you could tell, regardless of the fact of whether or not you actually give him the chemistry style, right? So the way that we are going to be lined up in game, as I was saying earlier, is we're going to be using him in the left attacking position, because I personally prefer to have the right foot on the left side and the left foot on the left, left foot on the right side, just because of the way you get into certain situations to score, where whether it's a near post strike or whether it's a finesse shot across goal or whatever, even though they're not that consistent, obviously, um, they need to move nicely. They need to do those angled runs for me to score to the near post because that's like one of the most consistent ways to score so yeah we're gonna be using the 4-2-3-1 he'll be playing in the left attacking mid position continue in the middle Diaby on the right if I feel like I have to play more than one game then I will but sometimes with attackers it's like this right like with some cards uh, you definitely need to experiment a little bit more but hopefully he's one of those dudes where I don't need to play more than one game but I might have to we'll see if uh if I have to, because sometimes you just have to adjust your instructions a certain way to make the card usable, but then sometimes they're just cards that I don't like in general, like Christian Eriksen's cards. So, yeah, let's get into a game. 
I mean, he's already cutting inside just from me going into that area in the middle, so that's pretty good, actually. Hopefully he does that consistently. Oh, he does move into the middle, guys. See how he doesn't stick to the side? That's good. He's doing it a little bit right there. Hopefully it's a, it's a thing I notice more. Mm, yeah, moving into the middle of there again. You kind of have to build up the, pl the play a certain way when it's like this. Cuts inside. Little touch, skill move. Dribbling, not crazy responsive, guys. Not crazy responsive. You may want to give him the marksman chemistry style for sure. If this gameplay wasn't a broken mess, guys, like you, you definitely wouldn't have to give him the chemistry style, but you guys know how it is, so. I am liking his off-the-ball movement so far. Beautiful goal right there. His off-the-ball movement is really good, guys. I really, really like his off-the-ball movement. The way that he's moving across the pitch is great. Even when I was on the side position over there with Philippe Coutinho, um, he would make that forward run, stop, go into the middle, and then play off of my attacker. So that's why it's very important to have uh, middle play over there so that when your players actually have good off-the-ball movements, they move into that space a specific way where I don't have to take an extra touch. And because he's a right-footed player, like I showed you guys earlier, he scores that opportunity because of the fact that I have a right-footed player on the left side. You know what I'm saying? Like this situation here, because we get the left-footed on the on the left on the right side, excuse me, we have more of a chance of scoring that. I try regular shots, but in that situation, I got the 45-degree angle because of the way that this game works. You have to go for the heel-to-heel -heel, uh, skill move, and then you can score afterwards. But I like to try the shots from time to time. You know? Oh, I think he used manual goalkeeping. The defender should have totally got that, but. We made it work there. Rafinha was moving all over the place there again, so it actually might be a fun card to use. You guys see how he starts to cut inside right there? That's exactly what you want them to do, guys. I'm telling you. That movement is beautiful. It's the best one, man. Cuts inside. I can take a small touch. Ball roll touch. He does manual goalkeeping. We go... Nice little ball roll, get into this position and score the opportunity. If he pushed me with the goalkeeper, I would have just had to done the ball roll touch and that's it. It's one of those things, guys, where it's like, uh, it, it just sucks, right? Because of the gameplay situation in this game, it's the only reason why I give snipers and engines to most of the cards is because of the way that it feels. But I would still leave the dead eye chemistry style on him because, like I said, the way that he's moving across the pitch is brilliant right now. And I wouldn't sacrifice that for potentially lower... Uh, off the ball movement in the way that he's like going around the pitch. You know, it's very, very important to look at that type of stuff. He needs to understand when he needs to make the angled runs, when he needs to stop and go into a different position, and so on and so forth. And so far, he's doing that perfectly. Like, this isn't a card that I would use in any other position because of the way that the attacking situations work in this game, you know? So thankfully, guys, I don't have to really adjust anything. I honestly just keep the dead eye chemistry style on, guys. Uh, uh, compensate a little bit for the dribbling if you can, right? I know it's harder, it's easier said than done, but I just feel like he really does require the dead eye chemistry style to move the way that he's moving and to make him a really fun card in the game. Uh, it actually works perfectly for my boy Scruffy over here because he could put Diaby on the right side and then Ruffing on the left, and his team will actually move really nicely as long as he has his striker on stay central because the way that his three cams are gonna move is gonna be really, really nice as long as he has the right players you know yeah it's great that i don't have to put an instruction on him though I, I i love players when i don't have to specifically do that for the striker it's fine because sometimes you have to make the move a certain way for your three cams or your other midfielders and attackers to move a certain way as well but i like that i don't have to do that to him on the side uh for a 4 2 i would assume that in a 4 4 2 he would be very very similar right like which is great See how he starts to do the cut inside run right there? Because this guy is defending a certain way with the way that his lineup is set up, the players are obviously going to attack a certain way too. They're going to respond to the defenders around them and all that kind of stuff. So you definitely have to take a lot of that stuff into consideration. That's when you have to sometimes decide uh, between, you know, switching to a 4-4-2 or staying to a 4-2-3-1. In a situation like this with the way that this guy is defending, a 4-2-3-1 might not be the most ideal situation because I can notice the attackers moving a certain way right away. Um, when you play with like a 4-4-2 where both of your strikers are on stay central and then you have that width to spread out the play, it could be way more ideal to play in that way. 
Okay, so what I'm noticing so far is that even Kamada on stay central, he's responding a certain way against the attackers, right? So in a situation like this, this is where you want to switch to like a, like a 4-4-2, which I believe might be this one for me. Uh, I don't know it's I don't know exactly which one is the one that I actually use. But um let me see if it's like it could be like the this one. We'll put pressure on heavy touch. No. Not gonna do pressure on heavy touch. We're just gonna do 442 balanced. And just make sure that we put Paulinho off to that side. Coutinho over here. Uh Diaby will be up top, and Dombele will be with Goretzka, and then Kamada up top. We don't I don't even know what the instructions are yet, but you guys will see the difference instantly when you switch to like a 442 in a situation like this, right? That's not where I passed it. I passed the guy right next to me, but that's exactly what I'm talking about in regards to how the players are moving now. Uh, the only thing that we have to adjust because I don't think it's set on these guys right now is they're on target man. We don't want them to. We don't. We don't want them to be on target man. We just want them to be on stay central so that when they themselves make those aggressive runs, it just works out better. Over here we have balance width. So if they're on stay central and these guys are on balance width, it should be way more balanced than the team now. But a situation like that, we should have been able to score, but unfortunately it didn't register the pass. Uh, to the right person, and then I, <laughs> with Coutinho, I'd still registered a shot to the bottom, so, you know. That's the off-the-ball movement that you need. Kamada understands, that's why I like this card so much when I did the review for him. He understands that once I make that specific dribble, he does the angled run downwards. Now you can see that because I've spread out the play and the two strikers are playing through the middle, Paulinho will stay out wide as well as Coutinho because I have the team set up that way. Now, if I really wanted to, in a situation like that, I could force the instruction out of Paulinho to uh, cut inside, right? Now, if I tell him to cut inside and Coutinho stays out wide, the team will be formatted a certain way. But in a situation like that, you know, when you have two aggressive-oriented strikers, it may not be ideal to force the instruction out of Paulinho there. Like I said, when you, when you stretch out the play like that, it kind of gives more space for your your two strikers to work with. But we will try him out on cut inside, just him without Coutinho, and uh, we'll see how that works out with the two strikers just on stay central. Being aggressive oriented and being smart in regards to off the ball movement. Certain teams, it takes me like a while to like really understand and like feel it out because they move a certain way, obviously, right? You can see the cut inside run right there. That's the situation that I'm talking about. So it's like, it's a situation whether or not you want to play more narrow or if you want to open up space this way, right? You see how Diaby starts to occupy that position, Rafinha stays in the middle. Like that type of play can make your attacking AI move a certain way where you might actually be able to open up the space in certain ways, right? So it just depends on the situation of your opponent, how he's defending. Sometimes one formation is not the most ideal to always use, right? Normally with like the cut inside instruction, if you have like strikers, Let's just say you have a striker like Ibrahimovic, right? And you actually set stay central target man on him. And then you have the player cutting inside. They'll kind of play a specific way where they'll play off of that cut inside run. If the player has good attacking AI, which Rafinha does. So he does the instruction really well. Um, so it, it all just depends, right? Like right now, I only have stay central on both of these guys, right? But because their attacking AI is so good, they will make those runs in behind. So, you know, we could try something different where we have both of them on stay central target man you know kind of put their body in front of the defenders a certain way and we'll have both of these guys cutting inside while i would say hmm i would say goretzka being the more attacking oriented one on balance just to see how we can open up the space on the sides or in the middle if he wants to occupy you know paulino's position or whatever um we'll see how that works out Starts to do the cut inside, Goretzka occupies his position, that's when he starts to go into the middle a little bit more, makes that side run. You wait for these passes right here, you see? Make that play right there, go back into the middle, then you start to open up the space in the middle, you see right there? You can do something like a nice little cross right here, lay it back, use your CDM, you know, stuff like that. That's why Diaby, he's a winger in the striker position, but obviously if you have like the right type of striker, physical presence and all that kind of stuff, maybe even Kamada there, you get that ball, you play through the middle, you go from there, right? Most of the times with the stay central target man instruction for the strikers, it's actually mostly ideal to just have your left mid and right mid on balance so that they choose better runs, right? 
We can see that he does like a, a middle run right here, which is why we end up getting this little bit of space. Finesse shots, I just want to show you guys an example. I already knew I was going to miss that. This is not the player's fault, okay? The finishing in this game is very, very linear. I wanted to take the finesse shot there because sometimes when people are watching the reviews, they tell me to, to take more shots. That is not the player's fault. Finesse shots are just not a consistent shot to take in this game. In that situation, I literally have to go for the ball roll touch, heel to heel angle. I could potentially score the finesse. It's not, it's not impossible, but it's just not going to be a consistent shot. You know what I mean? I think this guy actually ended up pause, uh, pausing the game, which is perfect, actually. So now we're going to take off uh, the cut and side part on the cards because it's making the team move a certain way that I'm not really a huge fan of. I actually want to have Goretzka also set up like this. If they're both on staying the edge of the box for the cross, you guys are going to see how the play is going to build up. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to change here, actually, is because Diaby is more of a player you use on the sides, we're going to put Paulinho actually up top. Uh, Coutinho definitely is a player you put up top as, uh, or on the sides as well. So yeah, we should play just like this. I'm just going to switch Diaby off to the right side there. Couldn't even make the switches. Uh, yeah, you would switch Diaby off to the right side, Coutinho to the left, Paulinho in the striker position, you know? That's why with most player reviews, guys, like I, I always focus mostly on off-the-ball movement because of how linear this game is in regards to shooting, dribbling, and all that kind of stuff. Like For some of these cards, it, it really just do it sometimes doesn't even take more than like 30 minutes of the first half to really feel out a card. I've never played with a card and felt significantly different about it, you know, after the, just me using it for like one game. It's just never been like any different. Like I know what it's going to be like because of the gameplay situation. I know how players are going to move in specific ways because of their characteristics, right? Like it's just stuff like that. That's just very, very important, you know, we get the rage quit. All right, guys. So a few things that we have to talk about in regards to Paulinho before you guys end up doing the card is that for me personally, I would give him the marksman chemistry style. Now, I don't think that his off the ball movement is going to be affected that much because as you guys know, I've done reviews on cards that have had 99 attacking positioning and they don't move like this Paulinho card does, right? In the left attacking position in a 4-2-3-1, he moves really well on the, on the team. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say he always makes those consistent middle runs. Um, he's more like a... He feels like a like a 70 or 60% to a 30-40% if that makes any sense, right? Which is good because it makes the card usable. I need the cards to be at least a 50-50% in regards to choosing to make a straightforward line and to make those cut and side runs as well, which he does do. In the first game, you guys were able to see that, uh, you know, when I build up the play a certain way and certain players move in certain ways, he will go into the middle if the opportunity presents itself. Now, sometimes you have cams like Coutinho that like to go on the sides, right? And when that happens, it will affect the movement of your left and right attacking mid. So for me personally, I wouldn't really have Felipe Coutinho as the center cam because of the way that he affects the movement of Diaby and Paulinho. But even though regardless, with the way that Coutinho moves to the sides, you can see that he still goes into the middle, which is great because a, a cam that doesn't do that, that stays more centered, you know, Paulinho and Diaby will move a little bit better because of the way that they want to move. Um, but, you know, I gave him... The Deadeye Chemistry Style, and you could totally give him the Deadeye Chemistry Style. It makes a lot of sense because of the shooting boost that you'll give this card. But unfortunately, with the circumstance of the unresponsive gameplay in FIFA, you need to give him a Marksman Chemistry Style to boost the reactions as much as possible, as well as the ball control and dribbling. Because for me personally, you have to aim for a better general experience with the card than it is like when he's in front of the goal, if that makes any sense. As long as he moves off the ball well for base characteristics, regardless of the boost of attacking positioning, then you're in the clear with this card. I tried him on in a 4-4-2. Um, he was really nice in the left mid position to open up the space for players like Diaby and Kamada even, Kamada, even though they're not really necessarily the most ideal strikers to have. Kamada is, Diaby isn't. Um, Paulinho was still moving around the pitch really nicely. So for the price range of the card at 113k, I think it's very fair for the quality that he offers in game, being a Brazilian player that plays in the right mid position. I do wish he had, I, I like, I wish he had the five star skills, and I wish he had some traits like outside, you know, outside foot shot trait, finesse shot trait would make this card really, really fun to use. Um, honestly, they should just give the finesse shot trait to every card because without it, players just don't know how to finesse the ball for their life. So, um, it is what it is. Uh, I showed you guys with the finishes. If you don't go for near post, heel to heels, or ball roll touches, the shots are going to be inconsistent no matter. The chemistry style you give him because you guys know with a dead eye chemistry style if you have 96 finishing 99 shot uh, 99 shot power with 88 composure no pressure 
you should score the finesse shot no problem but it's just the way that the game works i try to show you guys that as i do the review so hopefully you guys enjoy this video today i'll catch you guys for the next one peace out dudes love you guys